So I've made like uh, four keyboard videos with like three upcoming keyboard videos along the way. After those three keyboard videos, there won't be any more keyboard videos I'm planning to make. That's because uh, on the last keyboard video that I'm going to do, or the third one, the, the third one that comes last, I'm going to talk about my endgame keyboard. So now I ask myself, um, so what should I do? Should I save money? Should I take up something, uh, do some stuff? No, I decided to spend more money. I'm gonna show it on a different camera angle, which is this camera right here. And I'm going to be reviewing the Moondrop Space Travel. the Moondrop Space Travel. So the Space Travel is basically Moondrop's latest truly wireless stereo set of IEMs. This is also their cheapest one currently. It costs at around 1,500 pesos. So it is really cheap and it has ANC and transparency mode. And because of that price, I just simply just went ahead and blind bought it. Just straight up from Shenzhen Audio. I didn't even wait for the local stores to supply it. Now I have it and I've been listening to this for like a few weeks now, uh, like two weeks at most. Here's what I'm gonna say. I'll just quickly gloss over to the unboxing experience. So what you get here is basically a pretty cheap plastic cover thing. Nothing very special over here. The only notable things that comes with the product is basically the product itself, extra sizes of ear tips, and the USB-C cable. So let's start with the build design and comfort. So design-wise, it's pretty unique. See right here, it has this pretty clear shell, uh, pretty clear case right here with pretty much exposed size. How you pull it out, it's basically, uh, you pull this and it pulls right out. There's a hole there and you just line up and magnets will just stick them in place. The only bit of a problem with this is that it's kind of form over function because there's no cover. There's no dust cover or anything cover which protects it from dust or whatever dirt stuff from the air. If you're one of those type of people who's like very icky, yeah, maybe you need to invest in a separate case. I think you can just get a Neko Cake case so you can use these buds and put in a Neko Cake case and you're good. If I didn't mention already, the build is basically, uh, you know, it's just plastic. It doesn't really feel that premium, it feels pretty cheap, but you know, it's cheap. Like, actually cheap, we're 1,500, come on. It's like, whatever, right? So for comfort, I'm gonna wear it right now so that you can peep, so that people can see. See it right this, right there. Uh, it fits pretty good. It fits pretty securely on my ears. Now, comfort's pretty subjective. So I'm not going to say about the other people's experience about them, but for me, it's pretty comfortable. I don't think it will fall off all of my ears pretty easily. So I think that's a good sign in terms of comfort. So in a nutshell, the build is pretty good, although it's a bit uh, form over function, but I think he can pretty much use this on the go. And I don't think he'll be worried about them crushing or whatever. Just don't actually try to destroy them. Take care of these and they will serve you well. Now for the part that I want to talk about, which is sound. So what do these sound like? For 1500 that considers battery, ANC, uh, transparency mode, software, and basically all those things inside this, it, it will consider a lot. So there are some things that has been considered elsewhere and whatever. So does it skimp in audio quality? Uh, Yes and no. The first thing that's apparent on space travel is that, well, first of all, tuning-wise, it is really solid. I really do think in stock EQ, on the reference preset, it is actually pretty good. So there's a pretty good balance of the bass and the treble, and most of the mids are pretty much good. The bass doesn't sound really bloated, it sounds pretty clean. Uh, it can be a bit lean, but it's not really my complaint right now. It's pretty much going on neutral for my ears. Uh, the, so I don't really have any complaints with it. And for the treble, it's also pretty safe, right? It's an inoffensive, and with a bit of an inoffensiveness, it's a little bit dark side. But it's not really that dark, it's actually pretty neutral. I don't think it's a V-shaped kind of brightness. 
the brightness sounds correct the brightness is not fatiguing and that's what I really want in a Trolley Wireless set. And as for the mids, it's pretty good. Uh, guitar, male vocals, and female vocals, they do sound pretty even. But about the vocals, there is this small region. I'll show it with frequency response later, but there is this glare in the mid-range, in the upper mid-range, that when you look for it or you listen to a lot of female vocals, some songs can be a little bit shouty. A little bit in your face. Now I think for most people it's alright. There's nothing really wrong with that. But if I want to find something that's a little bit safer in the mid-range, maybe tweak this for a bit. So that's for the tuning side of things. Let's talk about the technical performance of the space travel. It's not really that technical. <laughs> So, I'll just say it right off the bat, timbre is pretty much, while I wouldn't say realistic sounding, it doesn't really seem off, but it does sound blurry. Uh, it doesn't really have a really good sense of detail to it, and when it tries to retrieve some texture, it just sounds a bit smeared. I don't really think it's pretty detailed in that regard. So in terms of texture, it's not really going to reveal that much. In terms of dynamics, again, it's... It feels like the bass is there, but it doesn't have any sense of authority. So if you listen to some metal and you want to feel the rumble, it's not going to do that. It will have presence, but not much punch. At least it's pretty clean. And lastly, for the staging performance. It's alright. <laughs> uh, I don't really find IEMs under $50 or like $2,500 or under $3,000. To have pretty good sense of stage and width. Although there are some exceptions. Overall, I do think that this is. It's alright. <laughs> it's serviceable. Uh, but it's not going to be the selling point of this IEM. And I think that's it for the technical performance. In a nutshell, in terms of tuning, it's pretty solid except for that little bit of glare. And in terms of the technical side, I'm not sure if the technical performance is going to compete with Sound of Zero, for Warner, or the Hola, I guess. Now with that said, let's talk about objective sound. So I'm gonna bring out the graphs in my screen. I'm gonna show you through my thoughts in the frequency response of the Moon Drop Space Travel on the reference EQ, the default EQ. So as you can see right now, for the most part, it's pretty much even. It's pretty much neutral. It follows the neutral curve. But as you can see here, right around 2K to 3K, there's this little, there's this bit of elevation right here that's a little bit more that I would like. If you recall from before, I said there's a bit of glare, right? I think that's what it is. This increase in 2 kilohertz to 3 kilohertz this is related to the placement of vocals and some instruments on space travel it's a little bit too forward for my tastes as a result of this it's a little bit blurry once again especially for very prominent female vocals in depending on the songs on how it's mixed sometimes on some songs it's going to be a bit too shouty for instruments i don't find it to be a huge issue it's this is more of a a uh, vocal problem than an instrumental problem. Now, as you can see in the bass, you can see that it's a little bit uh, lean there on my own neutral target and the treble is pretty much inoffensive right there. I don't think it will be very bright and at the same time, I don't think it will be very airy or sparkly. It will just sound like it exists. I think that's it for the objective sound of the reference preset. There's actually other presets. So let's talk about the EQ presets. Let's start with the bass head. The bass head preset, it pretty much gets boosted by like 3 decibels and like a slight boost in the treble of like 1.5 decibels. It doesn't add any sense of bloat, but I do hear that there's a lot more bass that I would say will be neutral. But it's pretty good because it's a better fit for music that's a little bit more bass heavy, while at the same time keeping the cleanliness of the mid range. In fact, the lower mids here is actually a little bit more appropriate to what I would like. And the treble is there to pretty much balance it out. Otherwise, if it's the same level of treble, it may sound a bit dark, a bit unbalanced, a bit warm tilted. Now the mid-range, the upper mid-range is still there, but it's not as obvious. So I think it's a pretty good win for the basic preset. And now we're going to talk about the monitor preset. In this preset, they remove the glare. 
and they flat the bass across. I have mixed feelings on this preset. Here's the thing. The flat bass is really obvious. You're going to hear it and because it doesn't slam, it doesn't have any sense of dynamics or in the sense of punch and slam, it really does sound flat, like really flat. But at the same time, the mid-range and the treble is honestly one of the best that I've ever heard even comparing to the wired set of IEMs, it does sound really, really, really pleasant and sounds pretty much neutral. It lines up with my neutral target. I really like it so much that it's basically the only piece that I use. So if I want to recommend something about the space travel, in terms of EQ, simple. You set it to the monitor preset, then add a bass boost to taste, and you're set. As a result, it's really, really good. Hey. So I just realized the fact that uh, I need to do a comparison. So the problem is uh, this video was originally a, uh, I don't know, an impressions video, but it got too long. It's now going to reach like 12 minutes, 11 to 12 minutes, even more. So might as well make it a review video. So I'm just going to do some comparisons. Let's start with the first eye and I'm going to compare with which is this one it's a bit jumbled but trust me i'll just say it it's the moondrop chew i would basically say that the chew is basically uh slightly more technical in terms of the detail and also has a better sense of imaging although it's still pretty much tree blob e in its presentation i think because of the fact that it has more treble it also has a better response of transientness there's just one problem with the chew and I do think that the space travel, tuning wise, is better than the chew. And that is the space travel sounds more natural, meanwhile, the chew sounds more metallic. As you can see, the graphs right here in the treble range, the chew has a lot more, which basically translates to the fact that it has very spicy symbols and overall a metallic timbre to it. It has this metallic sheen into it. For casual listening, it's not a good idea to get the chew. The Space Travel honestly has better timbre than the chew. Even on the reference preset or the base set preset, I think the Space Travel has a better tuning than the chew. And then lastly, another item that I'm going to compare with is the QKZ HBB. This one right here. I'm gonna compare it to the QKZ HBB and basically on the QKZ HBB, it's bass head. If you want a lot of bass, like up front and center, the QKC HPB is what you need. The dynamics of the QKC HPB, albeit very loose sounding, is better than on the Space Travel, where it's more controlled side, but also as a result, doesn't feel like it has a sense of authority or physicality on the Space Travel. So on the QKC HPB, if you're into bass head stuff, like let's say uh, EDM, uh, maybe metal, QKZ HPB got it for you. The problem about the QKZ, my personal problem with the QKZ HPB is that the treble is very relaxed. It's the opposite of the chew. Instead of having a huge peak over there, there is a dip. Like a literal dip after like 3K. Let's say too relaxed. Symbols doesn't really come across sharp. In fact, symbols could come across as blunt. It's the opposite problem, where now it just sounds very, 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 very dark. I do think that the space travel, like tuning-wise, is better than both of them. Because it's a little bit more neutral, it's a little bit more clean, it's a little bit more up to my taste. And at the same time, it has technical setbacks, right? But for a truly wireless set for like 1,500 pesos, it's honestly pretty solid. So yeah, I think that's it for the comparisons. So I'm going to talk about the other stuff. Because it's a truly wireless stereo set of IEMs, it should also act like one. So I went out and went to the Philippine Game Dev Expo. The battery life of the space travel i think it's pretty solid it's rated for like four hours yeah i think it lands on that three to five hour range pretty well 
I've used it with both ANC and transparency. I always use transparency because I prefer hearing the surroundings a little bit more. But in terms of the ANC and transparency, they're pretty fine. For a truly wireless stereo set of IEMs at this price range, it has pretty sufficient ANC and transparency mode. The ANC doesn't really do well at higher frequencies, not that a lot of ANC does, but comparatively my Buds Pro, I can hear less higher frequencies compared to the Space Travel. And as for the transparency mode, it is more focused on the lower frequencies than the higher frequencies. As a result, it doesn't really sound very natural. It sounds dark and also it can just sound boxy. While it works, the transparency mode on the Buds Pro sounds more open, clearer. It doesn't sound as claustrophobic or closed in. So what are my thoughts? My overall thoughts about the space travel? This is really goddamn solid. Easy recommendation only because it's the cheapest truly wireless set that is actually really good. If you don't think that you can get the Galaxy Buds 2 right now, which is around $60 or like uh, 3,000 pesos, 3,500, around that price, this is a solid option. Neutral-ish tuning, three presets that are pretty much solid especially the monitor preset in terms of its mid-range and treble usable anc and transparency mode pretty okay battery life that actually lasts you for a bit and for the price of 25 dollars or 1500 pesos it's good it's an absolute win easy an absolute win so Let's finish this. So comment down below about your questions about the space travel. If you like this video, like it, share it on your friends or on people who wants to get a new truly wireless set but they are broke like me. And as always, thank you guys and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.